Welcome back to the show, everybody. IGN Live from Comic-Con 2016. I'm Damon, this is Joshua, and we're talking Star Wars comics. Jason Aaron writes for Star Wars, and Kieran, Kieran Gillen writes for Darth Vader. Gentlemen, you are in the unique position of being able to create new Star Wars canon. That must be pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty yeah, it's, surreal. It's weird, it's like a like, historical novel, because you know where it starts, you know where it ends, and yeah. you're sort of filling in the gap. So you kind of, yeah. it feels like writing historical fiction in some weird way, uh, just in a world that never happened to exist. Well, it was a long, long time ago. Well, it's true, and far away. away. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I still feel like I'm a kid, you know, getting to play <laughs> yeah. with my Star Wars action figures, except now it's like, it's canon when I, when I play with them. It's awesome. I'm really interested to hear of how, when you decide to create a new scene, like, like Luke and Vader meet before Empire, which is like, how do you make sure that fits and not like sort of wreck the continuity? And by the way, it's one of my favorite scenes because Darth Vader, he goes, no, Luke says, you killed my father. And he goes, I've killed lots of fathers. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I, we, we wanted the, the book to seem big right out of the gate, right? So that's why by the end of the first issue, you get the two of them face to face. We wanted this to feel like it's an important chapter, right? Like not like a throwaway story. So I love the idea that you've you kind of got the two of them chasing after each other without realizing it, right? Like Vader's trying to find whoever blew up the Death Star, and Luke's trying to find out more about his father, and they don't have any idea they're you know they're right in front of the person that they're looking for. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, you two sort of did this like tango where your books sort of like intertwine and they met at the same point. It was a tango. It was a beautiful dance move. It's bit, um, like me and Jason used to work on the X-Men books together, yeah. so we're kind of quite used to that. So the idea of doing some like dancing with each other felt very natural. And he gets that. That was always for me the big thing with Vader. You know, the big thing that happens between the two movies is he discovers he has a son. And he's, that's basically the last 20 years of my life has been a lie. That <laughs> genuinely couldn't be bigger. So there's been so much emotional meat for me to dig in there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know, a, a cool thing of you guys taking on these books has been you've not only used, done the iconic characters that we all know, but you've created new characters like Dr. Afra and like the murder bots, Triple uh, Zero, BT. Uh, so what's it like not only creating those characters, but like using them in each other's books? Oh, it's fun. I was so jealous though. We did the crossover and Jason got to write the first issue where they all fight. And, <laughs> I, and I read, every time I read that issue, I laughed myself. It's silly because it was just so much joy seeing these characters being made up. Yeah, the, the Vader Down crossover was really fun. We got to, you know, take the cast of our two books and crash them together. I loved writing Kieran's characters. I thought every issue we had good stuff, though. Yeah. I mean, I was jealous of stuff you got to write. You were jealous of stuff I got to write. So that's, that's when a we good plotted crossover. it, we, yeah, we plotted it together, and then we just divided the issues up. So we didn't even look at which story beats would be in which issue. Right, right. So they were like really very natural. Um, yeah, and it's weird how joyous how they, the characters get on. You know, like you invent them, and you don't really yeah. know how Afro works until you put in the room with Han. You know, and the, the, the interaction was really very interesting. Yeah, yeah it was really fun. How much, oh, how much freedom do you have? Like, you have an idea, that's something you want to do, you have to run up the chain, get it approved by several levels, and then you're allowed to, to run with it? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's like writing, it's the same thing when we're writing for Marvel, right? For writing Thor sure. or, or Captain America or whatever. Um, yeah, there's stuff you can and can't do. And, you know, with Lucasfilm now, there's so much stuff they're right. working on, right? There's movies, cartoons, yeah. novels, comics. You know, just Marvel, we've got a lot of comics going on, so, yeah. And the other side is, like, they've got the storage group trying to coordinate everything. So, yeah, you get occasional no's. But what's more, what's more interesting when they give you a, a prod, as in, oh, yeah, we're doing this thing over here, and you could use that character here instead. And so it's, like, add additive. I mean, when I'm scripting, I, like, make up a gangster. I might say, OK, I can make up a gangster if you like, but if there's anyone available in canon who might be fun, throw him in and I can do it. Sure. So it's, like, it's quite a fun back and forth. It's very flexible. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, just to look ahead to the future a little bit, uh, we've seen some pretty pretty badass looking stormtroopers in your book. Uh, can you kind of give us an idea of what we'll see from them? Yeah, I think that issue just came out this week, right, where we introduced this new like elite combat group of stormtroopers called Scar Squadron, which that one's really fun because you know we wanted to do some new villains. I wanted to do some stormtroopers that were actually you know, accomplished, they yeah. could hit Formidable. what they shoot at, right? <laughs> and like be, you know, right, the real enemies to, to our guys. So we, we set them up in issue 21. Then the next arc that starts after that is about the rebels that have to steal a Star Destroyer, basically, for, to complete their mission. Oh, wow. So of course they end up with like the worst Star Destroyer in the galaxy that's <laughs> falling apart around them and they're trying to run it with a skeleton crew. And then we take those new stormtroopers and, and throw them in the mix, too. Oh. That sounds awesome. Okay, and also, you know, Darth Vader is actually approaching its conclusion, which we're, you know, it's very exciting to see the end, but also very sad you and Salvador are, are finishing your run. Yeah, it's like, um, 
we sort of realised around Vader down. It's like, oh yeah, we said it was a story the middle, beginning, and the end, and we sort of realised, oh yeah, we're kind of nearer the end than we thought we were. So it's that kind of no, it'll be 25 issues, probably about 30 issues in terms of content, and that'll be it. And it'll be like a novel. That's kind of what it kind of feels like. The final image is Vader has ascended to his Majesty, you see him in Star of Empire, and there's so much interesting stuff in the last few issues. It's this kind of. Um, I, as you said, I made this whole cast supporting him. I'm kind of going for more killing them. It's the, it's the difficult thing is actually putting anyone in a room with Vader and making them survive. Yeah. So it's like, is Afra going to live or die? And you have all this real interesting tension there. So yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with it. Cool, cool. And uh, you know, uh, with that ending, do you have like, any more Star Wars stories in you? Are you like thinking of something you want? Is there anything you want to do in the future? Uh, that's an interesting question. You know, I, I've, um, there's something out. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Wait and see. Okay, we'll take that. I'll take that. I know uh, what that means. Yeah. Um, means also, <laughs> when you guys aren't writing Star Wars comics and you know, Marvel comics, uh, you guys have your own like special like indie projects, um, creator own series uh, at Image, and uh, you've Southern Bastards, and it's right. it's it's so exciting to finally see Tubbs' daughter show up after that big tease um, in the beginning. Uh, so, what's it like to finally get to like show people like her story? Um, it's great, yeah. I mean, we've, we've been doing like a slow burn and building to that for three arcs now. And the third arc ends with Roberta, you know, for the first time having boots on the ground in Crawl County, Alabama. So the fourth arc is very much about taking these two forces, our main bad guy, Coach Boss, and the daughter of the, the guy he murdered in the first arc and throwing them together. Like, it's all kind of been building towards this. This is not the last arc of the book by any means, but... It's a huge step. It's a huge evolution of the, of the book. Yeah, very, very excited for that. And looking in Divine, speaking of exciting, you said this is the arc. I believe you described it as, like, this is the, the Taylor Swift, like, Bad Blood music video, where if anything can explode, it will. Yes. Uh, so when you're doing that, as you're, like, approaching the end of the arc, usually the, the end is when everything explodes. So how do you even, like, plan for how to end an arc where everything's been exploding the whole time? Uh, we work out an even bigger explosion. That's the thing that, <laughs> there's so much about this arc about pacing. Like, early on, stuff explodes, it's like a building, and at the end, like, planets explode. It's that kind of vibe. And there's so much about, say so it's the music video arc, this is about visuals and presentation. And being us, we eventually deconstruct it. We've just sent the last issue to press on Monday. Uh, and the final image, I, I got it in on Monday morning, and I, I sort of gaped into it. I'm like, have we actually drawn this? Uh, and I sort of was genuinely worried it's this incredibly shocking final image, uh, which makes me very excited. It's kind of like the halfway point of Wick Div. Like, so, you know, we, it feels like we've reached a major milestone. And every year, the book changes completely anyway. But yeah, we've got halfway for it there, and this feels like this. An all for the powerful moments as well, and we're really excited. Cool, cool. You can awesome. see my hand doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing it back to uh, Star Wars before we have to let you guys go, uh, you talked about writing for Star Wars is almost like filling the gaps in history. How do you go about selecting what gaps to fill in? Is it uh, you just wondering, I wonder what happened in between uh, New Hope and Empire, or do you, you think there are you underutilized characters that you'd like to enrich? Well, yeah, I mean, it, there's like a huge gap there, right? Like it's. I think continuity-wise, it's like three years yeah. between those two movies, and so three years we could do you know yeah. 300 issues of yeah. comics. You could you could take that for a long time. So I still feel like we're just scratching the surface uh, of that because there are a lot of story beats that happen kind of off camera between those two movies too. Yeah. Like you know where the the main point mm -hmm. of both our first arcs was Vader finding out he had a son, like yeah. hearing that name Skywalker for the first time. Yeah, I mean, through the Vader is, I mean, I just did a very close reading of all the movies and all the canon, and okay, what's implied here? Yeah. And it was like at the end of A New Hope, Vader is pretty much the sole survivor of the biggest military disaster of all time. <laughs> and if you know the prequels, it's even bigger, as in this is literally uh, the Emperor's plan for like 20 years was build a Death Star, dissolve the Republic, take over everything. And they just lost the Death Star. And it's kind of Vader's fault. <laughs> And then at the start of Empire, he's got more power than he ever had before. He's in charge of fleets. He's just killing people because he's randomly. So there's implied that he must have got more power between the movies. So for me, that was very uh, a fall and rise. And I said this all the way. It's, um, it's the House of Cards. That was the idea of a man who is a powerful man who feels slighted, turning to tactics he would not have done previously. And so that, that for me was always the story of Vader building to the majesty of Empire with the background of obviously Skywalker and other bits and pieces. It's stuff like you know in, in Empire, him being on first name terms with the bounty hunters. As in, he knows bounty hunters. He's been in that world. So that kind of like how that got there. You know, that for me, that was always the thing. What is the missing story? What is important and interesting? Yeah, that makes so much sense. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Joshua and I have pretty cool jobs. We get to talk about uh, video games 
movies, comic books all day long, but uh, you guys might be one of the few guys whose uh, jobs is cooler than ours, creating new Maybe. Star Wars canon. <laughs> I think it's pretty awesome. I'm pretty, pretty, pretty jealous, and we're excited to see what's going on with uh, Star Wars and the end of Darth Vader coming very soon. So thanks so much for coming by the show. Thank you. Stay tuned. More to come from IGN Live here at Comic-Con after this.